What's going on guys? Welcome to another XP video. Uh, let's talk about uh, live streaming on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook. <laughs> All these platforms allow you to live stream and a lot of people are interested in doing live streaming now or flight simming because they want to share their hobby with many people and they like what they see on screen so far of the current, current crop of flight simmers that we have. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the things that you're going to need in order to do live streaming. And let's start with the basic. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is a program on your computer called OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcasting Software. Yes, it is a free software that you download to your computer. You open it up and it allows you to literally broadcast to the internet through YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. So this broadcasting software is very powerful, allows you to do a lot of things. Or as a beginner, you can just start from scratch and broadcast your screen and broadcast the sounds from your game and broadcast your microphone. In addition to that, you can broadcast your picture on camera. So it gives you all those abilities, but with OBS, it's very easy to download, set up and get started on it. Uh, when you just download OBS, it's gonna go to an automatic setup for you where it looks at your computer specs, see what kind of computer you're rocking with. And then based on that, it will determine what's the best um, specs to run and to run your live stream on. But other than the program itself with OBS, OBS is gonna need some information from you as well. One of which is called a stream key. So when you sign up for a YouTube account or a Twitch account, uh, for if you wanna be a live streamer, they're gonna give you what's called a stream key. Basically, it's a password, so to speak. And this password or stream key, you're gonna actually put in your OBS program. So what happens once you put that in and you decide to go live, and you hit the go live button or the stream button or whatever it's going to be labeled you that will then send the information to youtube and youtube goes oh okay i see that you want to go live do you want to go live youtube will then ask you on the youtube window which is going to be on a separate browser window and you just hit the go live button on youtube and you start to go unlike a cell phone where you can go live from your cell phone with one or two clicks uh, on a pc it's a little bit uh more steps to be done it's not complicated so OBS takes your computer information, which is your game, your sound, your cameras, and all that stuff. It puts it into one box that you can manage to show whatever you want to show, by the way, from OBS. But once you said, hey, go live, it will then send that information up the internet to YouTube, and then YouTube goes, do you really want to go live? And it goes, yes, I want to go live. You hit the live button on YouTube, and you're good to go. So that's the first thing you're going to need, OBS. And take your time going through it when you get the application. Play around with it. You can create scenes. You can create transition. You can create a lot of different things. You can create filters, and so forth and so on. That's, that's, but that's going to be the number one thing that you're going to need. The second thing that you need, and I've mentioned it, is a good computer. So we already struggle with getting low FPS when we play our flight simulators. And we tune our PCs to the best it can run. And then we're like, yes, good. We can now go fly and we can now go play around in, in the flight simulator and we're good. However, once you hit the go live button on OBS, that also uses computer resources to render the video that you're streaming and send it up to the internet. So now your computer not only is doing one work for the gaming, it's also doing a second work for processing that gaming to send it up to the internet. And that takes computer resources. So what you're gonna have to do or might wanna do if you don't have a really, really good beefy PC is to adjust your settings down a tad on your game so that when you turn on OBS, if everything still stays smooth. So uh, a good computer is necessary. A good graphics card is necessary. Uh, some of the NVIDIA graphics card has a thing called NVENT Sync, and that allows you to dedicate a portion of the graphics card just to the streaming part, and then the rest of the graphics card is for your gaming part. We won't get into that. You can look that up. It's called NVENT Sync, and it's on NVIDIA graphics card. So it's like a uh, a, a section of the graphics card allows you to do all the video processing for upload to the internet or streaming to the internet. So that's the main thing. So you want to have a good graphics card on that computer. You also want to have a good CPU on that computer. 
And also you want to have enough RAM on that computer because now you're doing multitasking times 10, right? So uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM is like the minimum, but 32 gigabytes of RAM would be better for you. So your computer can breathe a little and have headroom to do all the processing that it needs to get uh, the task accomplished to send that video on up to the internet, to YouTube, so you can hit that live button and go streaming. The next thing you're going to need as part of this streaming equation, uh, so you have your OBS software, you have your good computer, you're going to need a good internet connection. Internet connection is very important for the kind of quality videos or lack of quality videos you're going to send to the internet. Uh, in OBS, it allows you to choose your bit rate for the video. Is it 720p? Is it 1080p? And I think you can even stream in 4K. But keep in mind, the higher the resolution, the faster the internet speed you're going to need to be able to upload that to the internet. So one thing to consider is the FPS of your game, the frames. Another thing to consider is the bit rate it's sending that up to the internet. And if your internet connection is not up to the task, you're gonna have choppiness. So that's one thing you're gonna to have to play around with is also make sure you have the best internet speed you can get in your area. I will tell you right now, the old school DSL, which is like what, uh, six down and, I'm sorry, six down and 0.5 up or one up might not cut it for live streaming these days. You need a very fast internet connection, a fiber optic connection or a, a cable connection that gives you 100 up, 100 down. I think you can get away with like 25 down and two up or something like that but your internet speed is going to come in very handy for uh, streaming on the internet. Now, another thing that you're going to also need is a extra monitor. And you're like, extra monitor? I already have problems running my one monitor. An extra monitor is going to give you a few things that you haven't thought about yet when streaming. You're going to need another monitor to be able to see what you're sending out to the internet in two ways. So. You can put OBS on that second monitor to see exactly what's live for you in your gaming setup right now. So you can make sure that um, when you have your game full screen, um, you can look across to your second monitor, see OBS running on it. And if you have an extra camera up or two cameras up, if you wanna show a browser window, doing your live stream or whatever it is, that will show in OBS um, on that extra monitor. You can do it that way. Also, you can make sure your audio is working. Many a times I've muted my microphone uh, by accident and my chat's going crazy. They're like, hey, uh, your microphone's off and I don't see, but I can glance down at the preview of my screen in OBS and see my microphone is not working because it shows you the audio levels that you're broadcasting the different sounds of, whether it's your microphone, whether it's the game or other third party things that you might run in the background like music and so forth. You can watch your levels. Another main thing for the monitor, and which is very important, is your chat. You get to monitor your chat live and get to interact with your audience and see what you're typing, get to type stuff back, get to look at your, um, your new members joining, your donations coming in, and all that can be done on that second monitor. So on that second monitor, the way I have mine set up is that I have OBS at the bottom. I have that monitor vertical, by the way. I have OBS at the bottom. And above OBS, I have a browser window with the YouTube studio open. That second monitor is to monitor uh, your current stream in your house, you know, what you're looking at through OBS, and also what the internet gets to see. So you get to monitor that stuff. Now, you don't have to have a second computer monitor for this. You can have an iPad, a little smaller screen, but you can do it on an iPad. You can also do it on a cell phone if, if, you, if you don't have anything else. You got to get creative here, but any second screen that you can use to even pull up your stream live, your phone, you could just pull up your stream on YouTube or Twitch and look at what's going on, but you want to look at it for your chat and monitor your chat and so forth. So definitely a second monitor is going to help you be productive in your streams. Let me give you one last thing, which is not a must. So one last thing that you should have, which is not a must but I recommend for you to have a webcam. <clears throat> I have a webcam that you see in my lower bottom left-hand corner of the stream. A lot of other streamers have webcams, and I think the only people that are allowed to get away with not having a webcam are real-world pilots. Real-world pilots are already sharing with us knowledge of how it's done in real life when you're doing flight simming, and uh, because of uh, anonymity, or they want to keep their privacy, they don't have to show their faces. And, and a webcam, you get to interact with your audience. They get to see your face. They get to see how you uh, act surprised, or are you 
you know, not act surprised, but be surprised when you have a rough landing, <laughs> when you get a smasher, right? Or when the scenery looks good outside, or when they make a donation, or when they give you a thumbs up, or you have a new member subscribe. All this interaction helps the audience to like you as a streamer and want to come back and watch your streams from time to time. So having a webcam uh, helps definitely. You can have a webcam that shows your background like this, or you can have a webcam that has a green screen and you can get later on into green screen, see how it works. A green skin screen can be set up really easily uh, with an actual screen behind you that's green and OBS can have a filter that makes it where the green is now transparent. You will see just my silhouette on the game. But having a webcam definitely helps to give that more oomph, uh, that more personality, that more personability to your audience that's watching your stream. Um, let me know in chat what you guys think. I appreciate you guys uh, for checking out this video. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. There's more videos coming. Hit the like button so the YouTube algorithm likes this video. Thanks for joining me. This is XP. I'll see you guys in another video. Peace. See you later.